In this video you will see my process for recording voiceover for my coding tutorials. Recording your own voice is an interesting process. There are some technical things to set up. You have to prepare the text contents and then there is the recording process. After this video you have seen the steps I take to record the voiceover for my programming tutorials and online courses. They are Prepare text Prepare microphone Record the voiceover Edit audio Process audio And export audio. After watching all the steps you can recreate them to create your own voiceovers. Step 1. Preparing text. I use a script to read from and usually I type it in the presenter notes. While preparing a tutorial, I read the text out loud. This has two advantages. I practice speaking the text before I start recording and if there are sentences that are hard to read, I can rewrite them. Step 2. Prepare your microphone. I use a Rode NT-USB microphone with a built-in audio interface. I use a microphone arm stand that is mounted to my standing desk. Unfortunately, the room I record in is quite large and empty, which causes echoes in the recording. My tip is to find the smallest room to record in. Connect the microphone and set the input level. The input level depends on the type of microphone, the loudness of your voice and the distance from your mouth to the microphone. Start talking into the microphone and look at the meter to see what happens. What is the position of the microphone? This depends on the microphone. The Rode NT-USB is a side address microphone, which means you have to talk sideways into it. The distance from your mouth to the microphone depends on your personal preference. Joe Rogan always tells his guests in the podcast to keep the mic a fist away. Others say to use the hang loose sign as you see on the right. Whatever the recording levels are and whatever the distance to the mic is, here is what is really important. Once you start recording, you watch the waves on the screen. Here you see three recordings. Too low, too high and good. Try to aim for a recording level and microphone position that results in a wave like you see in the middle. There are two things to keep in mind here. After recording you can increase the volume when the levels are too low, but it will also increase environment noises. Sound that is recorded too loud results in distortion. There is nothing you can do about that. So make sure to experiment before recording hours of audio. Start your recording software. I am using Ableton Live because I also use it for recording music. You can use any other recording software of your choice. There are many to choose from. Open the settings and make sure your microphone is set as input device in the recording software. Watch the buffer size. I set it to 2048. This is a big size which prevents audio artifacts while recording with my setup. I can do this because I am not listening to my voice on headphones while recording. Listening to your voice while recording is called monitoring. The time between recording and playback is called latency. If you are monitoring your voice on headphones, keep the latency down. If you are not monitoring, a larger latency can help your poor computer to process everything without artifacts. The final thing to prepare is arm a track by clicking the record button. And choose the input type. Notice I am using channel 1 of the microphone. Step 3. Recording. This is the hardest part of the process. 
This is the hardest. <coughs> this is the hardest part of the process. You have prepared technically, and now you want to prepare physically. First of all, make sure you have a glass of water nearby. Take small sips regularly between parts of the text. Don't worry about noises or pauses this will create. We'll cut them out later. The second thing you can do is voice preparing. Speak, sing, read the newspaper to the dog, do whatever you can to warm up your voice. Turn the volume of your speakers all the way down. This prevents a feedback loop from your speakers to the microphone. Ableton is ready to record. Press the record button and start talking. Make the recording. Speak in a natural voice, not too slow and not too fast. If you make a mistake, stop talking. This is a perfect moment to reset your voice. Just wait a second. Perhaps take a sip of water. <sighs> Exhale. Notice the pitch of your voice going down. Now start the sentence again. While recording, Keep an eye on the audio levels. At some point, you are finished reading the text. This is the moment where you can zoom in and edit your audio recording. Step 4. Edit the recording. This is where you can delete mistakes, silence unwanted noises and move audio parts left and right. This is something you just got to practice. It will take a while to get a good flow here. My tip for you is to find a good online tutorial for the recording software you are using and see how the pros edit their audio. Step 5. Audio processing. This step is very personal and depends on your voice. The audio you have recorded is raw at this point. If you have a naturally beautiful voice, you won't need a lot of processing. My voice does need a bit of processing, and here is how I do it. I've got four effects on my voice. First let me show you how it sounds without them. You have just started programming in Python and really like it. But after a while you hear from other programmers that Python is a slow language. Let me play that again with the effects turned on. You have just started programming in Python and really like it. But after a while you hear from other programmers that Python is a slow language. You have heard the difference between the recording with and without the effects. I have four effects on my voice. An equalizer. A gate. A compressor and a limiter. These are not magic components and you will find them in any decent recording software. Here is what the individual effects do. The equalizer takes down the volume around certain frequencies. This process takes a lot of trial and error and it would take too long for this video to show it. I recommend watching a separate video online where the process is explained in depth. A gate is an effect that shuts off the sound when it falls under a certain level. The areas with the dotted borders will be muted. Background noises between speech can be muted automatically this way. It's hard to describe the effect of a compressor. Generally speaking, a compressor reduces the volume of the loudest parts of an audio signal. To make up for the loss in volume, it increases the output level. The final effect in the chain is a limiter. A limiter can boost the signal while keeping the loudest parts under a maximum value. I use the limiter to keep the output signal under minus 6 dB, which works best for me for using in my online videos. As a general rule I would say, don't overdo the effects. Keep it subtle. The final step of the process is to export the audio. I do not convert the track to mono. I do not normalize. 
I choose PCM and export as AIFF. The AIFF file format is not really important. You can also choose WAV and even MP3 will work for voiceovers. So now you have seen how I record voiceovers. Here are some tips from the video in random order. Each voice is different and needs different processing. Turn off speakers to prevent feedback. Watch audio levels while recording. Speak natural. When you make mistakes, pause, catch your breath and have some water ready. If you have used any of the tips from this tutorial, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear if they helped you with your voiceovers.